Hey guys, and welcome to World of Tanks. I am Highflyer15, and this is Golem501. He is in his Sherman EZ8, and today we're taking a look at the Sherman Brothers, the Sherman EZ8 and the Sherman Jumbo. First up, we're going to take a look at the EZ8, and uh, we are on Prokhorovka. On, on the uh, other replay, we're going to be on the same map, but as Fury uh, Salient. I think it's called yeah uh, why why rename it I don't even know also I've been on a break some of you might have noticed yeah a, a lot of people have noticed uh, but uh, my explanation for being gone is I really just needed a break that's honest to God what I just needed um, when you make videos for years in a row at one point, you're going to get into one of those, uh, I don't know what you can call it, holes where you just feel like, oh, I just have to make a video. And one day you go, I can't make a video today. And then the day after, you feel like, hmm, that day was actually pretty good. I could relax all day, work, and then relax. I didn't have to work and then also have to work on the channel. Um, but I've been missing making videos and I've been streaming on Sundays and also popping in on uh, Circon streams once in a while. Oh, we see here Golem meets his first opponent. It's a KV-1S and uh, this is a replay of the... Um, no, wait, it's just a... Wait, it's KV-85. KV-85. <laughs> it looked like a KV-1S and I didn't bother reading the KV-85 above it, so I just took it as a KV-1S. Well... It's set on fire and dead anyways. Basically, it was a KV-1S. Just with a new name. And it had the 100mm, so... I guess it wasn't. Never mind. He put one good shot into it, and... Um, and then it died from fire. Too bad there. We have two Panzer Kampfwagen uh, 38 NA coming up. But... Um, they're just gonna protect the city for now. So that's fine. The city is safe. And the island is safe as well. See here, he's taking some shots on the M6. Finally penetrating on the second shot there. Or was it third? Can't remember. Oh, he shows his side. He should be able to penetrate that barn. But he hits the track twice in a, twice in a row. Sorry, guys. There, a little bit of a... Oh, here you go. Gets a shot on a KV-1 instead. And if you're sitting on this ridge, you can see... Uh, if you look at the minimap... You can see that the KV-1 is just outside of his radio range, which, which is the blue part, I think. I think that's the radio range. I can't remember. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. But the orange part is definitely the, um, the view range. So if you know that your tank has a good view range, then... You have you uh, you shouldn't have any trouble with just shooting at like a KV-1, which is in the middle because KV-1s do not have that good view range. Now he just got spotted by the um, the T-3485 by taking a shot at him, and I didn't notice if his sixth sense went off, but he did get shot at by the M6. The M6 did get taken out, so he's in no immediate danger as there's been no other tanks spotted in the middle right now. But there has been on the tracks down there a T-50, or is it T-150? As a T-150, and a Hellcat is sitting down there on the tracks. So you cannot just put. Uh, oh, oh, there's more tanks up there. There's an SU-100 and a Jagdpanzer I only saw the Jagdpanzer Fia before, but the SU-100 will hurt if he just, he lets it shoot it shoot it at him. Um, so yeah, you don't push over this hill unless you've secured it. Uh, we saw that on the stream yesterday with uh, Billy going ham and just rolling over the hill and dying because people were sitting down on the uh, on the tracks, which was unfortunate, but if they hadn't been there, we would have won the hill and gotten it. But sadly, they had support. See Golem taking a peek here over the edge, seeing if he can spot down. Oh, it's the ELC. It's a much smaller track. He has the track again on the ELC. Come on, man. That's weird. And no damage. Let's see if he can hit it on the move. It looks like it's trying to just out maneuver the shells. He tracks it and deals damage, which is very nice. And though he misses. 
I do that so many times. I take the shot, think that I, uh, I'm i going to hit it, and then I just reverse. And then I'm actually at a dis disadvantage because I didn't just let the gun aim once more. He could have taken the shot and then went back without getting hit. But he had to re-aim because he decided to move, just like me, whenever I think that mm, this kill is in the bag. It is in the bag, guys. You can start moving out. Oh, SU-100 has moved back. And, oh, he just fired. So, Golem can now put several shells into him. Decides to be safe. He didn't see the gun um, retracting into the tank, as I just noticed. Uh, SU-100 is taken out by a VK-3001D, which came to help. No, it was from the middle. From the middle. Very nice. That's also coming to help. The shell came to help, all right? I didn't miss pronounce or say any words uh he's gonna push up into the bushes here and nope the bushes really don't provide much cover or uh, camo when you oh he shoots into the ground twice in a row that's very unfortunate if enemies are very close bushes provides no cover um in terms of camo when you're moving up yakpan sophia has moved from the hill and down into the middle he's gonna take a shot there on the move on him oh it's the house there oh Let's see if you can hit him there. Nope, he missed him. Take another shot. You fire so fast to shoot. Yeah. Okay, let's not shoot. <gasps> there it is. <gasps> he spotted him. I think he actually spotted him. And dead. Very nice. He killed 1999-05-19. I guess that's, hmm, that's almost like a Swedish personal security, social security number. How do I know this? Because I've been down to the Swedish office of uh, something something i'm gonna get my personal uh, my uh, social security number changed because swedish numbers are uh, different from uh, danish oh, he, he bounces a shell on the uh, t-44 yeah oh, the next shot should kill him but he hits the ground again i was about to say freaking ground and now i did say freaking anyways so why didn't i do it at the first place he has the freaking ground for the third time this guy should have been dead three times over. And there we go. Finally dead. Sorry? What's he sorry for? And then... Fruit. What? What's happening? <laughs> I'm not paying attention. What's happening? Alright. Never mind. He has finally conquered the hill with the help of the guys from the middle and the back. The shot went low once again, but he still... He hit the track, it seemed like, but he also dealt damage for once in the track. That's good. He's dealing damage from a distance before the tank gets to him, which is very good. Something you should always do. If the enemy is not able to see you, as we saw, he uh, he did have six cents on the uh, EC-8, but he, um, he didn't get spotted whenever he took a shot at this one because he was sitting in multiple concealments. Um... Yeah, this is where you should uh, start thinking about your approach, because if you push up here, then the Hellcat is surely going to shoot you in the side as the T-150 is going to spot you as he comes over the ridge. Oh, Hellcat spotted. He's sitting behind the train. Let's see if he can hit him anyways. Sometimes, yes, you can. Very nice. And aim to... Ah, sadly. Could have been good with a kill there. Ah, he moved. Damn it. Well... You probably moved out of the way now, so you can go and deal with the T-150 as it comes up the hill. But let's just take it, let's just play it safe still. No need to rush this. Oh, by the way, I have a new mod. It's the Hitlock up in the corner, as you can see up here. Let's see if I can get, there we go. So you, can see, you can see the damage dealt, you can see the average damage dealt per shot, and you can see the uh, W8 live as you're earning it. This is a pretty good um, tool if you're new to the game and you want to, um, you, you've just learned about W8 and you want to improve it. So um, try and stay alive and deal as much damage as you can. And throughout the battle, you can live see what your W8 is and then just aim for a certain number. It doesn't have to be high as this, as this is in purple as he's done like 22 shells worth of damage. But already, when he had only dealt like three shells worth of damage, he... Oh, get the weak spot! Get the weak spot! There we go! As he had hit like four, five, ten shots, 
he uh, his double rate was pretty good, an average, um, much better than uh, the average players in the entire game. So you can see here how much you have to do. So in the middle of the battle, if you are staying alive and have done quite a lot of damage, well, not quite a lot of damage, but you feel like you've done a lot of damage, you can look up there, and then you can see if that is considered a good game. If it's in the green, yeah, it's good. It's really good. And uh, as you can see, the damage and uh, the average is, is staying in the green. Uh, but the W8 is in purple, and the efficiency is also in purple. So this is a Unicum game um, for, or it's, it's a Unicum, um, you would be called a Unicum if you average these kind of games. Of course, he's not going to average these kind of games, but it's, it's nice to be able to see that um, live that you're doing good. So... Um, so you actually know that you've provided a lot to the game. Because if you've done... He could have done like a thousand uh, damage. And it would have still been pretty decent in terms of help. Since uh, tanks uh, usually have around 600 to 800 HP. Depending on medium tank or heavy tank in a tier eight, uh, 6 game. So... Uh, if you had done that, he would have uh, at least killed, in um, like on average, a tank. One and a half tanks, so that's good. As we can see here, the uh, enemies are not coming out. It is an SU-100Y here in the end, and that is a GG. They decided to cap instead of go for the last kill, which is a quite unfortunate. He could have gotten a lot more ace, or not a lot more ace, <laughs> but we can see here he aced it. He could have got a lot more damage off that SU-100, but he did ace it. Got a fire for effect for dealing more damage than your own HP. This is also one of those medals where you can see that you've done your part. At least, I would at least suggest you try and get this every single time. Every single time you play a battle, aim for the fire for effect. Because it means that you've been out there fighting and dealing your HP worth. Of damage which is really good and then we have arsonist which just is destroy a tank by setting it on fire I can't remember which one he set on fire there he didn't set the KV-85 on fire that's for sure I'm pretty sure he didn't I'm pretty sure that wasn't the one that he killed with that anyways he also got bruiser for damaging enemy vehicle modules or injuring crew members at least five times during the battle and he did that let's see he did that two nine ten 12, 14, 16 times. So, of course, a bruiser there. You got high caliber for doing the most damage in the entire game. It has to be about above certain, but if you do most damage in the game, you're most likely to get high caliber. He gets top guns for six kills. Very nice. And he gets patrol duty for spawning tanks on the hill. He was the only one there at one point getting all the spawning. And overall, he gets 1,477 base XP, which is a very good uh, amount of XP for a, an ace tanker. It's around there. The, uh, the usual ace tanker is, unless it's a pretty tough tank to drive, because then the XP will be lower for the average player all over the server. And um, yep, here are the final statistics. He also got some spawning damage. I didn't see him tracking many people that also got hit by enemies, but he did spot and uh, get the uh, 1727 assistant damage but we're gonna move on to the brother the jumbo to this Sherman and he is also on Prokhorovka but with a new name let's get to it and driving the jumbo is Grenster and the main difference between the Sherman jumbo and the Sherman EC8 is the frontal armor it is much thicker than the normal Sherman uh, EC8, <laughs> and um, it also has the derp gun, as we can see here. Grinster has decided to load the derp gun with 60 shells of HE and 10 for heat moments, where the moments are getting heated, and he needs that extra penetration power. So we can see here, uh, the penetration on the heat shells are 101, so it does mean that he has to get to the side of something uh, like the KV-1S, the KV-1, stuff like that. It might just bounce on the front of their armor, so you really have to be 
careful where you aim these heat shells on derp guns. He's going to roll over the hill here. He has pressed R once, making him drive 5 kilometers over the hill, keeping the gun dispersion um, at uh, the lowest amount possible. He spots a Jaffe again, and the Tog. The Tog's just sitting still and gets hit in the face by the Hummel, losing more than half HP, and then gets hit by something else. I think it was the Panzer Selbstfallerfette 4 B. And um, that talk is so dead. Chaffee pops up again. And no shot is taken at the Chaffee. He takes some damage from the right there. From nothing that he sees. But he decides to take a shot just, just for good measure. And he's going to roll backwards. The talk gets humiliated. And uh, Grenster decides to move a little bit to the left. See if he can deal with this T-34 coming up over here. The talk is calling Locker because he was a slow target and already decided to go for it. Sure. Sure, buddy. Sure. Sure. Anyways. Ow. Grenster takes another shot right in the right side of his tank. And uh, he now has to retreat because he's half HP. And um, more than half of the enemy team. I was just about thinking about the words because almost the entire enemy team is left. And... Um, the only tank died so far. Oh, not so far. Just got updated. AT2 also dead. So slow tanks and a quick chaffy has been taken out. And uh, Grinster here is very cautious. He sees an SU-85 and hits him right in the side for full penetration. And that spells doom for the SU-85 as he gets to the garage very early. Well, three minutes in. You say that's an average game for a new player just going forward like that SU-85. He got spotted by something else on the other side and then just got hit in the side by this jumbo derp. Rinster is being, is being pretty cautious. He's not peeking too much. Um, he could have been peeking a lot more and uh, would have blamed him for it. He spots a Chino Kai, and let's see if we can hit that one. Oh, he just misses it. Holy crap, and gets tracked. He decides to repair his track as he remembers that he got shot a lot from the right side. He gets a, ooh, a very good derp shot. I'm pretty sure that one hit the Hellcat over there. And the Chino Kai bounces one more shot on his left side of the turret, which is pretty unfortunate for the Chino Kai. And the Chino Kai is a pretty bad... It's a pretty bad premium tank. It's a little bit better than the actual Chinu in the game, which is weird because premium tanks are not supposed to be better than their premium or their uh, normal um, counterparts. But this one is. This one is. The Chinu Kai is better than the Chinu. Uh, in the few areas where it's better, it's not a lot of areas. It's just a few. I think it's the gun. The... Uh, I can't remember if it's the, if it's the accuracy that's a little bit better. But everything else is just like the Chinu. And it doesn't get preferential matchmaking. It's a little weird. Oh, Hellcat. Yep, the Hellcat did get hit before. And decides to sit still right in front of a derp gun. That is not a very good life choice. As he also heads back to the garage. Talk 2, the second Talk 2, pops up in the middle. And he decides to load the heat rounds as the talk is not very well known for its armor. So he should be able to get a full penetrating shot right in the turret or the side at least. Let's see if he gets it. And he gets it. 373 damage with a heat shell right to the side of the turret. Very nice there. And a very nice decision to change to heat. KV-1 decides to try and get over the edge here but gets tracked by him. He loads a heat shell and does not penetrate the lower plate of a KV-1. As we just see there, the heat shells are not reliable damage dealers. So if you get hit by heat and it gets and it penetrates you, if you're at the equal tier and it's from a derp gun, then he had a pretty lucky shot. Um, the best thing to do against heat shells or actually just angle a little bit because then the heat shell could actually just end up in the middle of the uh, the track and deal no damage 
Chaffee shows up, gets tracked right in front of him with a nice HE shell there. And Chaffee has no chance of penetrating this jumper from the front and gets another HE shell for 242 shot. shots. <laughs> Damage right in the side. That Chaffee should not have done that. He should have stayed on that hill and maybe shot from a distance. Or maybe come in uh, 10 seconds earlier. Huh? while he was focusing on the KV-1 and the TOG, but that was just a little bit too late. Stuck 3, Stuck 3, G shows up over here and he lobs a shell, gotcha. doesn't even follow the shell all the way to the target and gets the kill. He's now up to 4 kills, his team looks pretty healthy, as I say that, his team gets put down a size, uh, down a notch, and uh, is now equal two Arties and three tanks against three tanks and two Arties. Hmm. There was a Jumbo down here somewhere, was new. And yep, there was Jumbo. Oh, Chino Kai takes out the Nashorn. That is about one of the only things that this Chino Kai can reliably penetrate. And derp. Yep, derp. Sad to say it, but the Chino Kai just. It's not worth the gold at all. Uh, I've played it a few times. A few times. More than a few times. But I just don't see the uh, appeal in it. If uh, anybody likes it, it's good. If anybody has a good game, send it in. I want to feature it so you can show us how to play this pretty eh, tank, in my opinion. We, As we can see here, the M44 is the master of the enemy team as he has five kills he isn't an arty and has just done all this from a distance and it's been safe all game we'll see he gets a good shot on the jumbo 140 damage that's i would say that's pretty high for a derp gun on the armor of the jumbo he decides to angle towards the arty if he gets hit maybe the he damage from the arty won't hurt as much as if he was showing his side so that's a pretty good play there from him Still moving, still moving, still moving. The Jumbo could be peeking over the edge there, or he could be sitting right next to the track still. Then he would get spotted in just a second if, if Grenster gets too close to the tracks. There is the proximity spotting area. Oh my god, he's still spotted. He does not have the um, sixth sense on this tank, that is for sure, as the M44 gets a pretty good shot in on him. Oh, and the M44 uh, gets... Uh, 34, 37, gets a decent shot in, tracking him, keeping him in place, he has to get out of there, enemy jumbo is right there looking at him, so he's still spotted and he has to keep on moving, oh, Artie just misses, keep moving, Grenster, luckily the M44 decides to aim at something completely different, and um, Grenster does not have to taste the a shell from that caliber once again. He could be tasting it in just a second if he doesn't get to some decent cover or at least runs away. Oh, close again. Keep running. Keep on swimming. Keep on wait, swimming. What are you talking about? Keep on going. I don't know what I'm talking about there. See if he can get up to these tracks and peek over the edge and get a shot on the jumbo trying to spot him through the tracks. That would be pretty good. The Churchill 1 takes out the M37 in the corner, but he does also get taken out by that pesky M44. He's having a great game there in the RD. Getting way too many kills, and the Jumbo thinks that he has a shot or a chance at getting a shot, but he did not, and Grenster takes him out. And is now down to M44 and Grenster and a Hummel. The M44 misses completely. I have no idea where that shot was going. Maybe he didn't aim completely. Maybe he missed taking the shot before Grenster moved. He was guessing that he was going over the tracks, but Grenster did not. And he's now heading towards the Arty on the other side of the map. He's highly likely sitting down in one of the bushes, like in the K line, K7, K1 maybe even. Seven kills for each of these 
battle heroes for each team. But as we can see through the XVM, um, the teams weren't, it didn't consist of very good players. There was a good player in the KV1S. I didn't even notice where he died though, but uh, he only got one kill and didn't provide much. As, and as we can see, it is a dangerous tomato that was sitting in the RD and getting all the kills from a distance. Let's see if Grenster can go down and avenge his team just a little bit. The Hummel is a lot faster and it's going straight down the middle. Maybe he can spot the RD and take away the attention so Grenster can move across the hill and just get the easy kill for a an eighth kill. Maybe, maybe not. Churchill 1 is pinging in K1. Already likes to sit right there. Grunster was just looking, but no dice. And we're down to three minutes now, so maybe Cap. The Hummel is going for the Arty. Let's see. So maybe capping is a pretty decent plan as Ar the Arty, the M44, has to go forward and spot Grunster. Grenster is very low on HP, so maybe he should be taking this safe route. I'm not sure. I think I would have been sitting in the cap zone. Maybe the enemy already also went for a cap. You never know what these scumbags decide to do. But again, as we can see up in the right corner, I will be playing with these this XVM heat log. It is showing that he has done quite well. He is up to 5,854 W8. Um, and that is only the uh, live feed. He has not, the spotting damage does not get added to this XVM uh, hit lock. And uh, takes a shot and hits it right in the face and kills the no name tomato and gets the win. He aced the jumbo. He also got Fire Effect, the medal that you should always aim for if you are a newer player and just really feel like you need to improve, always go for his Fire Effect. Deal as much damage as your own HP. So Grenster had to deal 730 damage. He dealt about 3.2 times his own HP, which was really great. He got Shell Proof for taking a lot of damage, having uh, total damage blocked by your armor exceed the hit points of your vehicle and of course survive the battle you got steel wall again or again as well because if you get shell proof you're highly likely getting uh, steel wall as well it's a very good chance there was duelist get hit by two vehicles and destroy them and then we have the hand of god survive and win the battle having received damage from at least four different enemy vehicles uh, so if you've taken damage from three vehicles in the game, you can just go out there in the end and get another hand, get this very elusive medal, which is very tough to get uh, at higher tiers. You got Bruiser for dealing a lot of critical hits. He was shooting Zerb guns, so of course he's gonna do some uh, critical hits. And then we have Radley Walters for killing uh, eight or nine enemy vehicles in one battle. He got the eighth kill on the Arty in the end there, very well done. He got Spartan for ricocheting a, um, a shell with less than 10% of your total HP pool. And he was at 15 HP out of 730 when the T40 decided to bounce on him. We looked at the steel wall. He got high caliber again for doing the most damage on your team. Top Gun, of course, follows with the Radley Walters. He got 1811 base XP. That is very very nicely done a beautiful game there carrying the entire team on your back with eight kills in the end very nicely done Grenster and thank you guys for sending in these Sherman replays I would really love to get these mid tiers uh, mid tier games because a lot of people are sending in high tiers but I've been featuring way too many high tiers and people have been notifying me about it and I have paid notice so here we go with the tier 6 brothers, Shermans, at the tier 6 slot. Hope you enjoyed, guys. I've been Highfly15, and I'll see you next time.